The reason that uh, we started 1838 was finding things that shocked me. And it was a shocker because I have a degree in African American studies and never heard any of this about what was happening in Philadelphia. I also felt a little bit betrayed, and I think I took that betrayal and just turned it into more energy. And it was the volume of people that really surprised. I found out there were 600 businesses, black-owned businesses. 1838, I thought to myself, where there had to have been thousands of people to support those businesses. And then I looked at the census, and I was like, there were thousands of people. <laughs> and so that was just amazing to me. Like, um, I'm going to map this. I want to see where everybody is, because honestly, the grid hasn't changed here in Philadelphia. So I can stand on this corner, like I'm standing in front of ICY. And I can imagine Octavius Cato and Fanny Coppin, because the school's still here, the corner's still here. And so why aren't we recreating these lives and recreating this energy that existed? But, and then I bumped into Morgan, and, um, and then we just became sort of, um, I call it, quantumly entangled. And then eventually we had the opportunity to give a walking tour. And then we became a 501c3, because the walking tour became our call to fame. I suggested that Morgan and Machiko take the research that they had been doing and breathe it into a tour. Documents are incredible, but you need storytellers and you need analysts. We decided to do a women's tour, one, because we have some heavy hitters in one neighborhood. They are all walking distance from each other. We realized that, you know, Fanny Coppin was here at ICY. I'm looking at Frances Ellen Walker's, uh -oh. Watkins Harper's house, and then around the corner, there's the two Rebecca's, and then there's Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield, and we were like, oh, this is a, woman, a black woman's enclave, okay? So this is a tour. Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield, better known as the Black Swan, was a phenomenal operatic singer. She was raised in Pennsylvania and was internationally renowned, so much so that she performed frequently in front of the Queen of England. Now, the trick to the Black Swan story is that she wasn't uh, always free to be her most extravagant self. Once upon a time, she was actually enslaved in her very early formative years underneath a Quaker woman. Eventually, within her emancipation, she made a name for herself here in Philly and in the region. We're standing in front of what is currently called Waters AME, but this church has been here since 1845. It was one of the first Baptist churches in the city. It was originally called Shiloh Baptist. So all of that you see behind me was built with black dollars. Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield claimed this church and became the leader of the worship team, uh, but also taught music to the kids in the school that they had here. Elizabeth and Taylor Greenfield and Frances Ellen Watkins Harper literally lived two blocks away from each other. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper were standing in front of her house. Um, she was a passionate anti-slavery advocate and someone who took all of that passion around uh, protecting black people both before and after the Civil War into her writings. And she became uh, a prolific author. Many of her books were written right here at this home. She's originally from Baltimore, had somewhat of a difficult early life, even though she was born as a free woman. Um, and she uh, was able to publish her first poem in Baltimore when she was 16 years old. And what's interesting about her is that she just decided in a time, 1840s, when women were supposed to do the thing they were supposed to do, which is to get married and have children. And instead of doing that, she kept writing. And she kept writing until she was 35. Uh, and then she got married. So that was pretty difficult for her. She came back to Philly. And eventually she was able to buy her own home. Um, and this home she bought in 1871. They held events together. Uh, we noticed one in the archives really recently that was taking place at Mother Bethel AME, where Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield, she was the opening and closing performance. And then Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, she gave a poem or a speech to follow suit. That a lot of times there's focus on exceptional individuals like William Still, but then you're not looking at the community of people and what they did as well. So we're trying to elevate those stories of what uh, Morgan calls the extraordinary ordinary. The work that Morgan and Machiko are doing weaves together 
the documents. And then they do imaginative storytelling that helps you feel the drama. They're incredible. Two, one. 1838 Black Metropolis. Woo!